Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So in this video, I am going to be doing another Nitro setup video and I'm going to slightly deviate from the usual Nitro setup video to start off by saying that I now have a bright new shiny VIP icon up in the top left. The I actually ended up purchasing both the Flag of Courage as well as the Clock of Forgiveness, so I'm no longer free to play. <laughs> and the biggest reason for my purchase was actually the Clock of Forgiveness. Um, I got so frustrated last week with the Slepnir battle that I ended purchasing it. And finally, summon ends turn next to Slepnir to be the one to die. Oh, it attacked Luna. Interesting. Question is, can Liana's talent heal them up to full? I don't think it can, unless she actually does direct healing on them. So I'm going to have to do that, which means heal up high, talent heal. Luna? I don't think Luna's at full. Shit. Yeah, she wasn't. Ah! <sighs> so stressful. This blocking thing. Now let's have a little block. Okay. Just move Iris up. Because Luna can move 1-2, then 1-2-3 to block. And then Luna will Raging Thunder and block. And now that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that works. Eight tiles moved will decrease the damage of Shadow Raid by 160%. So, Leon should not do any damage at all. Perfect. And there we are. Wait! Oh no! Why did I put him in the line? <laughs> Oh no! Ah! Hey. And that Jimmy totally Kondo. screwed me. While I was picking up the Clock of Forgiveness, I was like, hmm, the Flag of Courage is also quite cheap. Might as well pick that up too. So I ended up buying both. Uh, you know, $3.99 for one. 99 a dollar for the other one and then the gift of the goddess while quite useful because it gives you 50 trinity crystals every day which you could then use to buy 140 uh, sorry, 120 stamina per day ultimately i decided you know uh might as well not the interesting thing though is effectively if you buy all three you're probably looking at two additional ssr items per day roughly that would be my estimate one from the extra energy run, and then one from, you know, 120 stamina. If you use 120 stamina, do like six runs every day on one of the energies, you're probably going to get one extra SSR, if not even two. Yeah. Luck dependent, but quite likely. Right. Two additional SSRs every day could pretty much get you your training ground upgraded significantly faster. Um, for now, I just have one. We'll see about the other purchase. 
So, two of the three VIPs is, have now been purchased, is what my current status is. Actually, I only just recently realized just how big of a difference the privileges make. Because if you factor that in, right, the flag of courage and the gift of the goddess, the game has been out for roughly an estimated 300 days. So let's say there's been 250 days where people have been farming the level 60 and 65 anarchies, where you're pretty much guaranteed to get a guaranteed SSR from the daily run. Right? Actually, 55, I should say. 55, 60, and 65 all have the guaranteed SSR. So, if you've been purchasing 120 stamina every day, as well as having the flag of courage, you're getting two SSRs for 250 days. That's 500 additional SSR training items. 500! So, I guess that really explains why my training grounds is so far behind overall, right? I'm just missing so many items compared to people who have had the privileges that it's no real surprise that my training grounds is more or less capped at the you know 34% upgrades as opposed to being at level 20 upgrades. And of course, I don't have a lot of my soldiers upgraded either at this time. Like even critical ones like zealots. So I guess in some ways purchasing the flag of courage now will slowly make up for that. <laughs> Very slowly as I said I'm already around 500 SSR items behind people who have had privileges from day one. In addition to that if you calculate it let's every single Goddess Trial Run gives you 70 Oracle of Ore if it's a daily run. So if you're missing 70 items for let's say 250 days, 70 times 250 is equal to 17,500 Oracle of Ore. Right? 17,500! That's a lot of gambles, whether it's weapon gambles, armors, headgear, or even these enchant gift packs. Or epic martial spirits for the matter. So once again, it just shows, I guess there's a, between free to play and privileges player, there's a huge gap. And then of course, between privileges and someone who spends, let's say $300 per month for the Echoes of Light skins, there's also a very big difference. Because people who spend that 278 or 300 dollars per month, they're probably going to end up purchasing all those dailies. Um, give me a moment to just bring them up. The gift pack section, right? So if they purchase all of these daily discounts, skin packs, yada yada yada, they have a big advantage, especially in particular, and of course the uh, limited time ones like the Thanksgiving items for example because by purchasing all of these first of all very often you get additional rune stones and second of all you're getting a lot of additional enchant right and we all know enchant is probably the biggest difference between someone who has who is playing recently and someone who has played for a long time right you have to keep re-rolling enchants to get something good so if someone has all their weapons providing things like plus 14 or 15 attack with additional attack, you know, you have a huge advantage over someone who has like plus 10% attack. You know. For example, like Fox showed off recently a 14% attack weapon with plus 15 attack. So you can say this is basically plus 17 attack in just from the weapon, right? Things like this make an absolutely huge difference. All right, so with my talk about, you know, free to play, privileges players, and whales players, uh, I guess I'll go back into talking about my gear. And uh, I'll start by talking about the dragon farm results of last week. So, the week before last week, I had the most number of SSRs I've ever gotten with 20 in one week. Last week ended up being really, really good as well. 
it was still 14 SSRs. That's not as high as the 20 of the previous week, but 14 is still nothing to sneer at. Because I got so many SSRs these two weeks, I and I ultimately ended up on uh, Saturday starting off uh, with the Flag of Courage, I decided it's worth doing some gambles now. So that's what I did. Uh, three weapon gambles didn't get me anything good, so for 1600 ore, I just gave up 300 ore for nothing. Right? The three armor gambles actually got me two goddesses dress and a dark robe. So the two goddesses dresses will be used for Yulia. So I'm getting an armor for her. And then the three helm gambles, which were done early in the week, ended up giving me a Sharon, did my third one, an assault helmet, and a carbon fiber helmet. So basically you can say I spent a thousand ore to get a Sharon and two goddess dress, because everything else was turned back into ore. Which isn't bad. I mean there are items that I need at least. So no complaints there. The monthly SSR last week from the store ended up being the Blood Pact. So that's my first one getting it, which I don't know who I'm going to give it to yet. I haven't even built it up uh, because it's considered one of the better items for Juggler. But juggler, keep in mind, Juggler can actually use a whole bunch of different items. Um, for example, Juggler can use the plus one mobility and plus defense spirit divine boots. Right? He can use spirit boots so that he can move after attacking, especially with B Shock. Right? He can use uh, Blood Pact. He can use Overlord's Badge. He can use Swordsmith Medal or Bracer Emblem. So that's just off the top of my head. That's five different SSRs Juggler can use. You know, they all offer different advantages and disadvantages, so it's kind of hard to decide which one you should actually bring on Juggler. So for now, this will just sit in my inventory, I don't plan on using it. Timeless Trial was 100 ore with the Elven Belt. And then finally, in terms of SSRs I got, the 14 SSRs, there was only one that I truly kept, which was the Oath of Justice. Oh, sorry, I also kept this Purgatory. I already have a level 50 Purgatory, but I realized recently that I'm pretty lacking in <laughs> having uh, staffs for mages and healers. So, I have not been getting any blue moons recently, so for now I kept level 20 purgatory. I'll probably turn it into ore in the future once I get another blue moon, but temporarily I just kept one. I don't think I'm going to need two level 50 purgatories, although I may build up, build up a second one because I believe, not 100% sure, but I believe purgatory debuffs can stack on a character. So if you have two characters with purgatory, you can stack two debuffs on an enemy. That's actually pretty useful for Ancient Beckoning, potentially. So that is, and then the rest of the items were all turned into ore, like two Frost Reds and a Gargoyle Jacket, a Wind Cutter Dagger here, a Tierra, Reaper's Breath and Assault Headgear, Carbon Fiber Armor, Assault Suit, Loki's Mask, Twilight Helmet, and a Last Knight. All of those were ored. So basically, in conclusion, that's 1300 ore and an Oath of Justice last week. Alright, so let's now jump back into the game and continue talking about my current status in game. In terms of SSRs, you know, people have considered me very lucky, but in truth, I feel like everyone has items they have and items that they don't have. For example, the items I'm missing, and I've been missing these for a very long time, right, since day one, really, for weapons. To this day, I do not have an Extreme Magic Bow. Right? So, I, it's basically impossible for me to use Joshua because Joshua really needs the extreme magic bow since after he does range attacks he frequently gets into melee attack range or gets melee attacked by the enemy. Um, demons, not having a demon slayer is pretty normal. You know, this is, was a very recently released item, so what can you say? 
Balanced Blade, I got one, which is fortunate, true. I don't have a Pale Staff for the single target strike damage increase. Now technically you could use the SR um, Secret Art Staff, which does provide the plus 15% damage increase, but you do preferably want the Pale Staff because it has a chance to inflict the enemy with a random debuff. As for the other items that I'm missing, there's none that I truly need. It's really, in particular, Extreme Magic Bow, a Demon Slayer, and a Pale Staff, and ideally a second Balance Blade. You know, fingers crossed, I don't think that's gonna happen, but one can hope. Armor-wise... Armors, I've surprisingly picked up pretty much everything here, right? And it was very recently that I finally picked up an Aeolus Battle Armor and Bloodline Magic Armor, like this past month. So for the first 10 months that I played this game, I did not have any Aeolus Battle Armors or Bloodline Magic Armors, you know? It took me... I didn't get them until November, which is just RNG, right? Similarly, last rites, I got a few recently. But I didn't have any until I think October or November as well, right? Even now, I could. But surprisingly, once I got one, I picked up three of them. So I currently do have three, which is nice. But you can always use more of these. Last rights. Next, helmets. Helmets. The main thing is how many Tenyo's headdresses you have, right? Especially for PvP. I have one. So. I am going to have to do helmet gambles for sure to try to get more copies of Tenyo's headdresses. And if I can get more copies of King's Crowns, which I only also have only one of, that would be amazing. So, Sharon's, I got three of them in the past two weeks basically, which is crazy as well. Um, but yeah, I could really use King's Crowns, Tenyo's headdresses, and even Soul Stealer headdresses. I have one of that. I'm not going to say no to another Odin's to another Odin's battle helm because one is currently on Lana and I could use one for Yulia. And Chief's helmets are always nice because for PvP, if every infantry can have a Chief's helmet, it's just an extra buff that you can have on all your characters in general. You know, if your enemy has deep, has buff removal effects, you could potentially remove the Chief's helmet buffs, which is nice. So yeah, you can see that there's a whole bunch of helmets that I need more copies of. So I'm probably going to end up doing some helm gambles now. As for accessories, accessories is the big thing. Accessories is the one that you can't actually get except via random accessory boxes. So it's very luck based what accessories you get because there's no direct way of grinding accessories. You can't grind the dragon to get accessories. And in terms of accessories, the ones... Everyone knows I have a lot of Overlord badges, right? And that seems to be what everyone has focused on, that I have tons of Overlord badges. But what people don't seem to realize is, I, to this day, I don't have a single pair of boots that affects mobility at all. I have no Apex boots, no Divine boots, no Spirit boots, and Spirit boots were incredibly important for the Slepnir battle. Um, and then finally, and yeah, so none of those mobility buffing boots. Right? It wasn't an issue early on, but now with Ancient Beckoning, it's come up repeatedly and it's causing me so much trouble just not having any pairs of these boots at all. Um, also, lack of Apex boots is really affecting me in PvP, is what I'm finding. Just you know, for example, being able to have Leonhard with extra movement, or Bernhard with extra movement, or El <coughs> excuse me, or Elwin with extra movement, because I don't have the Apex boots, all of them are pretty much stuck in the water most of the time. You know, my I've noticed my enemies have been able to run circles around my Elwin and Bernhard and Leonhard. Leonhard much less because he has that instant teleport, but Elwin especially is struggling with three mobility. So yeah, that is the SSRs that I'm currently lacking, and I desperately need. Whether you can say it's I have good luck or bad luck, I don't know. It's all in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. That's not to say I have terrible luck. I think I've been getting some pretty good luck, but at the same time, I don't think... 
I've been as lucky with equipment as everyone thinks. Because keep in mind, I have been playing since January. It's been a very long time. <laughs> Other than that, I should briefly mention that last week, or for this week, you know, I got all my chests open, and shockingly and disappointingly, I got zero, or sorry, I got one skill enchant from those boxes. One arena skill enchant from these boxes. So... I'm starting to realize, shockingly, Arena Mastery, the one you want the most at this time anyways, is the skill enchants. So that your character so that you can increase your character's skill above the three times damage rate of Omega. Right? So I'm going to struggle there. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get how I'm gonna survive against Omega this week. Because top tier Omegas seem to have around, I would estimate, 450 skill, roughly. So you're going to need above 150 skill on all your mages and healers that you use. Otherwise, they can get one-shotted by Omega. And I currently don't have that. So, in fact, that one skill enchant that I got, which was just, uh, it wasn't even the SSR one, it was a rare skill enchant item. I used it on Omega, and unfortunately, Omega is still stuck at my 33 skill. Keep in mind, I think this maxes out at 75 or 80 skill. So my Omega is really lacking skill right now, right? So we'll see. I mean, this week, I think it's Drum and Gandir for this week should be dropping the Assassin skill items. Right, let me just quickly bring that up. Ancient Beckoning, Drum and Gandir. If I bring up the reward details, Yes, it's for archers, assassins, and demons. So, at the very least, I should be able to get Omega's skill up quite a bit by giving him some skill enchants in these slots. So hopefully, we'll see how my Omega performs. Basically, this coming weekend is, wh is where Omega will shine. Especially since tomorrow, I am going to have a 6-star Omega. In terms of shard farming, I already covered it last week, but this week I'm going to finish off Omega, continue to farm Rachel, continue to farm Yulia, and then start on Landius. So the next two weeks we'll be doing Landius, Rachel, and Yulia. Right? And then, then after that, Rachel will be done, Yulia will continue to farm, Landius will be done, and then I'll start using those runs, as I previously mentioned, to clear all the characters whose Gate of Fates I haven't even done at all. To farm for extra vouchers and shards, you know, characters such as Lifany, the Hartle, um, the Sakura Wars characters who I haven't used. Basically everyone who I have who currently has zero shards will be the characters I'm farming. So that I can get more draws for the banners. So yeah, you know, looks like Sigma, oh, Gizaroth, Sakura, Sumeri, Wilder, Diharto. He's at 50 out of 104 stars because I just drew multiple copies of him. Um, Illustrial. I drew several copies of her as well, two I think. So yeah. Lambda, etc, etc, etc. Just... That is pretty much my farming status for shards. Uh, once I finish up 5 star Rachel, 6 star Landius, I am going to unlock all of these characters, at least their Gates of Fate, and then we'll go from there after that. Because what I farm in shards after that will depend on who I draw from the UU, from the UU Hakusho banners. SR status. Well, due to the event, Chris instantly hit six stars, right? Because the event, if I open it up right now, lets you earn potentially 120 shards of Chris. Right. 
Under Chris's gift, you can exchange for 20 shards of Chris six times. So I exchanged three times, got 60 shards of her, instantly raised her up to six stars. And I'm currently kind of sort of farming this event, but my goal is to try to get this event done this week due to Christmas coming up and I'm not having that much time to keep farming this event later on. So we'll see how that goes. At the very least, I can definitely farm up this event because I'm sitting on 104 burgers. I already mentioned previously that I've been stocking up on burgers for to use when the Anarchy hits the, the level 70 version. So yeah, I'll use them for this event for now. And then when level 70 Anarchy hits, that's probably when I'll seriously farm the training grounds to hopefully get my training grounds seriously upgraded because I am running into a hard limit in PvP for sure with my training grounds this low. Um, Thing, even things like enemy mass nades completely and utterly tanking my hits due to having a fully upgraded damage reduction here from emergency treatment, upgraded core defense value so that the plus 45% defense and match defense increase is stronger, it's just causing me lots of issues. I clearly need to upgrade my training grounds to be able to be, to continue to be competitive in PvP. Hence, yeah, the VIP purchase yet again. And finally, gear change and enchants. I mean, I actually tried a lot of enchant rolls last week, did not get anything good. For example, I tried to reroll this last night with the full moon, rolled it multiple times, the best I got was a plus 10% intelligence. I saw a plus 15% intelligence by the way, but no plus 15% attack. Similarly, for Bozel, I was trying to reroll the Soul Stealer headdress for him to use. Right. It currently has 11% hit points, 8% magic defense, which is solid, but ideally I'd rather have plus 15% magic defense and maybe a tiny hit point boost. Even if it's just 4% hit points or whatever, I'd be happy. So the main goal is to have maximum magic defense so that Bozo has maximum int. And I have not seen plus 15% magic defense thus far. So I used up a whole bunch of clock scrolls, SSR ones, and I used a bunch of rare ones too. Haven't gotten anything good. So, works in progress. Once I get that though, I'll probably upgrade this to level 50. And in terms of upgrades, that's possible because of all the SSRs I got recently. You can see I have four Epic Martial Spirits on hand waiting to be used. So, and now that I do have the Flag of Courage, earning me an additional 70 Aura Column Ore every day, I should be far less strapped for SSR items in general. Yeah. Going forward, I'm now starting to focus on upgrading properly to get myself ready for Season 3 of Apex Arena so that I can actually be hopefully competitive there. I actually don't know if I'm going to be playing by Season 3, but on the assumption that I am, those these purchases will be useful then. All right. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. That's my current status at this time, and thanks for watching everyone. And on that note, Nitro out.